Okay, good morning uh, and welcome to the panel discussion. Today we're going to be talking about probably one of the most important aspects of game development and I think one that a lot of developers don't spend enough time thinking about when producing their games and that's of course marketing your game. I think a lot of developers get very focused on making sure that they have the resources and the capabilities and skills to actually make the thing but not enough time is really given to thinking about well once it's made how do I ensure that my players are going to, oh, the one that I can get players and how will people know about my game and you know play it and so they will buy it or mon be monetized however you, whatever mechanism you decide to use and so you know you can actually earn your living and make through it. Uh, we've got a fantastic panel today of uh, some great people who've got a lot of expertise from the continent. Um, can everyone just introduce themselves uh, what you do just kind of a brief intro of who you are and what you do and then we will take it from there. Uh, Aaron if we can start with you. Yes, uh, thanks, Nick. So I'm Aram Tawia, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Letty Arts, which is a video game development company in Ghana and Kenya, um, where we build games based on African history and folklore, games and digital comics, actually. And we have a franchise called Africa's Legends, and uh, we've built a, co a couple of comics and games around them. We have a product, a publishing product called Afro Comics, which publishes the comics, basically, and is opened up to third party um, um, comic producers and um, artists um, around the continent. It's focused at the African content creator, um, not to be <laughs> racist, but just to grow the community and get um, African content at one place quality, good content, well vetted, and um, also fix the fragmentation issue of finding African games and digital comics around the continent. So that is for Afrocomics. Um, Africa's Legends has about um, 16 superheroes and, and 30 villains um, across Africa. And we have really cool superheroes, Shango, um, Anansi, um, Yoruba um, God of Thunder, which is Shongo, Anansi is from Ghana. We have some fantasy characters also loosely tied to historic figures. So, yes, we, um, we believe that games, Africa is ready for games, and we need to be part of this industry. And it was started in 2009, and uh, we are 10 years, so a lot of experience to share as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Lebo, you're next. So thank you, Nick. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Lebo Legoma. I am the head of client service at a company called Sea Monster Entertainment. We're based in Cape Town and we are a serious games and animation studio. What does that mean? It means that we use games and animation for things other than pure entertainment. So we believe that uh, education and learning is a strategic opportunity. And so we work with our clients and business partners to use games to drive learning, marketing objectives, and other social objectives. And that's us. Great. Thank awesome. you. And Philip, finally you. Hi. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Philip Mukasa. I am the head of operations at Clan of the Kings Limited. We're based in Kampala, Uganda. Uh, we've been in existence since about 2004, but as a comic book house. And we recently just, um, we started the whole video game side uh, in 2016 uh, with very huge ambitions of creating a AAA game. You know, so we have a lot of IP and uh, Sunjata, Trumpet of Last Day, is our very first foray into the video game industry. It's a AAA game based on African mythology that's uh, coming out uh, next year on console and then probably much later on on PC. So basically, I run the day-to-day -day company and make the work for the developer seamless so that they can focus on what they do as well as partner relations. So basically that's us in a nutshell. Fantastic. Okay, and I suppose I should just mention that I'm Nicholas Hall. Uh, I run Interactive Entertainment South Africa, which is the uh, trade body and lobbying organization for game developers in South Africa. 
And I'm also a business development manager at Renderhead South Africa, which is one of our game development companies. And we do a variety of things across a couple of sectors, both serious games. Um, we do quite a lot of client work and we are working some of our own IP. But back onto talk, onto talk. So uh, sort of as I mentioned in the intro, um, and I'm going to open this kind of question up for everybody because I'd be interested to get everyone's kind of insights as we have um, uh, quite a broad range of experience. I think when, it, when, when we talk about marketing, one of the sort of the common knowledge that's out there is, is that a lot of um, developers and professionals will say, well, you should start marketing as soon as possible. And so where, where do people, you know, where do you draw that line? What, what does that actually mean? I mean, it's, you know, do you do it when you've kind of got a gray box prototype? Do you have some sort of minimum art? Is there maybe a step before that? Do you focus on another element of, of the business to kind of kickstart their marketing thing, be it around building a community, fostering, how you kind of do that? So if we could get everyone's kind of insight on that, that would be great. Um, Level, let's start with you and then we'll, we'll move on to sort of the others. Thank you, Nick. Um, so at Sea Monster, you know, we, we don't really build our own IP. We have the capability, but we've been fortunate enough to have to take games to the market. One of our clients is Capitech. And really one of the key things that we've learned here, if I could just pick one, is community engagement. You know, um, the, 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 that aspect of engaging with your community. And as soon as you can, to start building that affinity is critical and important. If you think about the fact that even at a prototyping stage, you might be user testing, you know, that is a form of marketing. Yes, it serves a purpose around helping you refine what you're going to make in the game, but there's nothing that prevents you and testers to become evangelists. Uh, and then from growing that out. The other key thing around like um, uh, community engagement is when you launch a game, that beginning is, is so critical that you do actually want that feedback and that interaction with your potential users. So it's thing, very practical things that we do is when a game goes up onto the App Store, we're there on the App Store on a daily basis, looking at reviews, responding to them if someone has a challenge. And what this really does is it creates presence of mind and it creates that feedback loop. And then if you're able to harness some of that energy and continue that forward, it then makes it a lot easier then to kind of like grow out your customer base. Look, we in Africa will probably not have the benefit of these big massive budgets for a very, very long time. And often even marketers make the mistake of thinking just because you're building a game and because it's so immersive that people will come, but it is not the case. So literally, anything that you can do to help starting to grow out that audience and that community and engaging them and keeping them within the journey is absolutely critical as far as we are concerned. Aram and Philip, I mean, that actually raises an interesting point. And I think both of you, because you, you, you kind of have the side business of, of, of the comic sector that you've both kind of, got, um, kind of started out with, have you how have you used or leveraged that side of your business to leverage your game site? So have you been able to tap into your existing audience of your comic readers and turn them into, get, you know, has there been a particular strategy around that? Is that something that you're actively pursuing or, you know, how's the, how are you utilizing that? Cause I think that's really interesting about getting these different business units, these different sectors of the creative industry and kind of leveraging your expertise and your already built up community there to get access to your games. And then um, I think, Aaron, if you can answer that first, but then Philip, you can kind of go straight on afterwards because you guys are about, you're launching very soon. So um, if you could kind of give us some insight on what are you doing to kind of build up for the launch of that game, given that it's going to be around, you know, it's going to be in the next 12 sort of months we're expecting to see release. So yeah, um, Aaron, maybe you can start. Yeah. So um, yeah, so for us, basically um, the comics that we have, um, carries the stories of the characters that you are building the games for. And, and for us, we've been in the business of building internal IPs and then building for companies and clients as well. And, um, and the reason why we came up with the comics was we started Letty Us First by just building a game around African, African characters because we wanted to make games based on African history. We made the game on iPhone, put it out there, then we realized that people couldn't download from here, from Africa much, payments options were not much, so um, we got a lot of download from Egypt anyways, and the US and Canada mostly for, 
from the first game that we launched in 2009. Then um, it was, we were novices. I think at that time, we were trying out stuff to realize that engaging the community was really key, what uh, Lebo said. And this character that we made the game around, it was super hard to be writing about the character, engaging the community, telling them about what the game was. So fast forward to 2012, we were like, no, we, um, I started um, making comics right from my junior high school. So I'm like, hey, okay, the comic side is very necessary. And since the industry is also young on the continent, we need to be able to tap both circles right it's comic games they move together marvel makes has franchises they engage the community and then they have a reason to make the game for for the characters so we came up with our superhero franchise called africa's legends which um we released and we realized that there was a spike so the comic was like a marketing thing people see the very cool graphics they are curious to know about where the powers of that character comes from, and then they read about the traditional bit as well. And they also created a new sphere. So we came up with Africa's Legends, the comics started building a community, and then we made the first game, Anansi, based on the comic. Then suddenly, people started seeing the reason why um, they play a certain game since we were using the comics to carry the stories of the game characters. And, and in reading more into the gaming space, we realized that there were different styles of marketing. It, you can make a game, like some of the games, uh, Tomb Raider came directly by, by the game, like Lara Croft becoming a movie character, a comic character. There's a whole value chain. And then you can also come from the comic side um, Max Payne and all those guys coming from comic side, Spider-Man before video games. So we started tapping, we realized that having two um, um, wings, we could juggle and use one for marketing and then, and then use the other one to push the video game. So that's how come we saw um, a lot of, um, we were able to harness our community around the characters to market our games. And when it comes to um, the marketing, to, we realize that the budget that is needed to push a game is even more the budget for development or at par. You need to have that, those kind of budgets to do community engagement. You need someone consistently doing that. The industry also has to evolve around uh, media personalities also being, for instance, um, if you have a blogger, the blogger could be part of the team blogging your daily development diary, writing about the progress of the characters, the progress of character design, having content on a certain blog and pushing for social media so that your communities will keep engaged. You launch the product, you need to now be engaging the people through push notifications, getting feedback from Play Store, and then having a way to tie it to the general public that this person had this problem and this is how to navigate it. Like you need to create content around your game. And marketing is a whole different ball game. And I think as Africa is evolving, these things should become full courses in universities and in high schools. People should start learning about how to market these creative products right from the university sector. And since the industry is very nascent. It is hard to do it now, but thanks to God that we are pace setters in pushing this and taking all the hits from right, right from the beginning. So I believe in the next three, five years to come, these skill sets will start being taught in universities and these resources would be much on the continent for us to tap to push our games. We do that through internships. We train um, internally bringing interns from outside to come and intern with us and they train the local guys who also intern with us but it should become something formal that we can leverage on to do the marketing easily when we release these games into the market your mic 
Uh, Nick, you're muted. Helps if I'm not muted. Yeah. No. Um, so, uh, Philip, building on kind of from that, I think something that Labo and both Aram have kind of said is that you know community and building your community first as part of your marketing efforts is really important. Um, so again, sort of uh, kind of put the question to you is, have you managed to leverage sort of your existing community that you had around the comics and what strategies have you kind of taken coming up for the launch of your game? Yeah. Okay, so maybe I'll just start by agreeing with everything that Aram just said. Uh, so with regards to the process, uh, whatever he just said for us, just multiply that by 10. Okay, <laughs> so basically... What's happening for us, given that we're taking on a AAA project, right? We've been in development for three years, right? This is our very first one. So uh, our room for error is like very, very small, given that the resources we've put in, you know, the time we've put in, the human resource we've gotten, and we have a very small team as well, right? So um like he said in terms of marketing especially in the gaming sector your marketing budget is way way bigger than your development budget right so if you choose to do it yourself the amount of resources you're going to need we're talking people actually pushing this stuff you know the platforms everything you know if you do not have resources then you have you have to get it right with the resources that you have so the way we are doing it is basically uh, partnering, partnering with uh, a few big brands and finalizing uh, partnerships with uh, big, the big publishers to sort of help us push our content, right? With regards to mobile development, you have a very big base because there's a lot of mobile penetration on the continent. So you sort of have a very big base in order to, sp like, to spread your content. If you have games on iOS and Android, you know, there's a lot of, there you have a, a lot of reach. For us who are targeting like high-end PC gaming and uh, consoles, especially now next-end consoles, by the time we can actually realize the number we want to on the African continent, it take us maybe about four years from now. If we're targeting, let's say, people who are going to buy PS5s now, right? So in order for us to realize the numbers on the continent, it will take us a while. But with regards to our comic book, like our the comic books, we have a very small but passionate fan base for our comics. And a lot of our and game that we're making is based on the most popular one of those comics. So the good thing is a lot of them know the story. So they're really excited. That's why we decided to build that one. So they're very excited about it. So they, they, they actually know what to expect. We're just giving them a whole you know, a unique experience around that. They'll be like, you know, if they look at, look at like, let's say God of War, they'll be able to base it, like, based on how fun it will be, not like where it was developed. We're aiming for a sort of, like, choose between that and God of War and The Witcher, as opposed to, like, oh, that game was made in Africa. Let's buy it, you know? Yeah. Like, that's so good. It's really good coming from Africa. We're not aiming for that. We're aiming to be, like, it takes a should something like that you see so basically we're not really out there yet a lot of our marketing is organic right if people we we have the social media pages we have the youtube channel thing but it's sort of just to give people insight into how we're doing the whole creative process and everything so once we're done we've done quality assurance and everything then we'll go into full-on marketing with our publishing partner so that's how we are approaching it, the size of the project, the time we've taken, and the, the approach we're using. So something I think that's, you, you've touched, every, kind of everyone's kind of touched on, on, on uh, I think an important aspect as well as this, right? You know, marketing is not just something that kind of happens, it, it needs to be funded too. So now normally what we would see, especially in sort of the games for entertainment field is we, we a lot of people will partner with their um, will partner with a publisher to do the marketing kind of community engagement, social management, and that that's essentially where the budget for that is coming from. Um, but if you aren't, if you don't have a publishing partner, if you're kind of doing it on your own, as I think a lot of developers on the continent are, where is that? You know, where is the money coming from? How are you? Or where can you be? Um, getting the funds in addition to the funds that you need for your development where are you going to get that from to do your marketing support and i think maybe a, 
a sort of the follow-up question to that is given that you're probably not going to have a huge amount of money available for marketing what do you find to be the best channels like wh where are you actually doing your marketing to raise awareness and i kind of i open that up to anybody on the panel to, to kind of answer Aaron? Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, and, you know, from this, for, um, for us, getting a publisher locally is really, um, in Africa, it's really hard. You know, um, the industry is really nascent. So there are not much publishers that, that are available, even if you are seeking. And when you go internationally, they compete at a certain level and your quality of game might not meet this publisher. So it's quite hard to get um, that sort of um, partnership. So what we do basically is consulting. So we started consulting from 2012, making games for companies, businesses, which was the serious game business. So we were building games on tree conservation um, um, with um, um, NGOs, um, companies who want to do advocacy. So it was quite hard to sell games to these big guys to move away from their traditional ways into games. So they had very small budgets. So we make a game for a couple of few dollars, probably um, a thousand dollars, then it rose to two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. So we're making consulting. So anytime we got a consulting gig and we developed the game, we, we made it a license model so we keep the ip we use the ip that we use for the game and then we build up on our internal game so we wanted to sell africa's legends make africa's legend we want to make a fighting game an rpg game a triple a game someday but we don't have the budget so we took we did a lot of consulting and to stay true to the company we did not do websites or we were trying we still do only game consulting game digital comics so that's how come we were able to fund the, the business and also fund development. So <clears throat> in funding development, we kept a bit of the budget for marketing. And um, I remember um, internally in 2013, we were releasing our first game franchise, which was Anansi. So we kept, we had some internal budget, I think about, $4,000, and then we also part, went through partnerships. So we started talking to local companies who promote tradition. Like, Anansi is quite huge here, right? So um, we went to some marketing companies to partner them, um, talk to some SMS, bulk SMS companies to give us some SMS um, um, sponsorships. And yeah, we did all these. Then we also got the community together, some of our um, comic fans around Anansi, tourism, all these guys together, but it was super expensive. Trust me, the budget we had for marketing didn't go quite far, but we had a couple of um, downloads and it was an Android, it was a, an Android game fest. And then we got a partnership with Microsoft the following year to, to make the game exclusive for the, their Windows phone when it was coming down here. So, so that gave us a bit of leverage. We had about 20,000 downloads of Anansi on the Windows phone on Microsoft's small budget, right, that, that they gave us. So we did that through some bit of internal, internal budget for social media, community engagement, paying the one doing the blogs and stuff like that. And then we got some partnerships through SMS distribution and all that. So that's how we started. But fast forward to, um, to today, consulting didn't stop. Uh, um, our consulting gig though is clearly that we are still just doing consulting to invest in our internal products. We still didn't stop it because it's the only way to monetize on this continent without an investor or a publisher. So, but, so the consulting budget grew and grew and grew and we started companies started accepting video games as a way to engage people in education and to do certain advocacies and get analytics reports and all that based on how people engage with the game. 
So we started getting bigger budgets internally until now we started signing partnerships with telcos. Telcos also started buying into the whole gaming space, trying to see what is happening. So we were now in a position to have certain games that we could license to telcos. And in doing that too, we've been quite strategic around it. We build games that are likely to be appealing to the telco. So instead of probably building an RPG game, which is a triple A game, which we clearly know that a telco here might not jump on it immediately because of the size, the target and all that. We try to look at what the telco is doing at currently. Probably is it trivia? Is it um, 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 scan and win, spin and win? You know, all those things. And then we build all these tiny games still on top of our engine that we license it in a form of partnership to them. Then they take up the marketing, rebrand it for them, and they do the marketing push. Even in those cases, there are situations where we now realize a gap between the, the partner, the local partner marketing a game, like a digital game content, as against their traditional ways that they used to do with SMS and all that. So, so, the, so there's a learning curve in every um, stage, but there is progress. What I'm just saying, like there's progress in, in how we are releasing and um, making our products known to the community. The other side of that too is that since our focus is Africa, people are like, hey, why don't you go diaspora? Like what, Philip, uh, go to the diaspora, compete there, and then trickle down. But for us, we believe that Africa, there are a billion plus people, and infrastructure is also growing, and the industry also has to grow in a certain um, pace with how the industry is growing. So I remember I went to Supercell, I went to Finland, I met the Supercell CEO, and he was like, Look, I wanted a partnership. We had the strategy game with Africa's Legends. I'm like, hey, we want investors in this game and all that. So one of the things that the CEO told me was like, look, there is big potential in Africa. There's no doubt. If you are able to fix gameplay in Africa, if you are able to fix what works in Africa, it could be probably a game in Africa is not a triple A game or it's not a, like a like a mobile, high-end graphics game. It could be something very easy, like a WhatsApp game or a text game or something. You know, if you're able to fix something that works in Africa and the business model truly works, then we in Finland will now be interested to come on the continent and partner it. So when I got that, I'm like, okay, let's try and fix what works in Africa. So my strategy has been getting into these corporate spaces, talking to everyone, talking to NGOs, talking to those companies who are already doing business on the continent for 20 years plus, and letting them understand that the creative industry, which is gaming, is the only thing that can unlock their revenues to spike times 10, because it brings the arts and the sciences together. It's the only way that you can dive into the virtual world and also market to virtual people and make money from virtual goods. That's been the strategy. And uh, that is what we've been pushing till this far. All right. Uh, Lebo, I want to kind of segue from that onto you because I think you potentially have a very interesting um, insight here is obviously most of your work is you're doing for customers and a lot of it is internal. Um, but I know on occasion you do do uh, essentially customer facing apps for, for, for your customers. Do you struggle to get them to commit marketing budget? Um, you know, it, you know, g tell us that story because I think that's also particularly interesting because it speaks a lot to the strategic partnerships that both Aram and Philip have spoken about is, but then how do you convince them that, you know, they need to be committing this money to actually making awareness, it's not enough just to make a game and people will find it. Yeah, look, I, uh, certainly what we seem to see is that when people think about a digital engagement or a digital solution, they don't often lead with that. So very often there's a TV ad, there's a radio ad, 
And then the game is the last thing that they think about. It's like, oh, can we make a game to fit into that? And so the, you, you find that the thinking, the thinking is a little bit out of, 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 of sync. And because the game is a last consideration, not enough thought is given to where does this game or interaction fit within the marketing journey and its purpose. And that I'm going to say is something that is common across industries and sectors and, and, and we're slowly learning to do that. I think as people become more familiar and more afraid with the potential of games, we will start to see that change until the point where we might even see big campaigns leading with the game. I mean, if we think of uh, dumb ways to die, uh, that's an example of how the Australian Rail Authority were like, we're going to use a game to push this message and everything else came behind that. What I often think is that there is, at least in South Africa, unrealized and untapped potential in strategic or, or, or aligned partnerships. You know, if we think about it, in SA, games, mobile games are drivers of data consumption. And yes, we might build clever mobile games that aren't so intense in, in their data usage, but generally uh, whether to download them, whether to engage in them and all of that. So then it becomes a question around why aren't the telcos kind of getting closer to the game space to say, as we take your product to our market, uh, we are actually also growing out a market of people who are going to become consumers of mobile data and all the other mobile products as well. And this is certainly what Aram was starting to allude to as well. Um, I think the other thing plaguing South Africa around this sort of like, how do you get the content out is look, we still haven't completed our journey around uh, uh, moving to digital sort of broadcast. So from a spectrum's perspective, you know, South Africa is still very, 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 very inefficient. But hopefully once things like that start to happen and mature and spectrum becomes more efficient, we will find opportunities like this. My, my closing point is the following, right? Why did soapies become soapies? Soapies existed because these companies such as Unilever decided to subsidize the content, the experience to the audience in exchange for being able to get their brand message out. Now, if you think about the fact that when people play our games, right, they play our games for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. What other medium provides that level of engagement? And what kind of opportunity exists in that? So it's, for me, it's often a, tra a, a tragedy that we as young African creators who see a clear vision often have like links into international markets, but we can't really galvanize the support on the ground, whether it's due to a lack of infrastructure or the maturity of our market. So for me, I'm a believer like Aram that these, this is the spaces where we are going to find opportunities to grow revenues 10, a, a, a hundred times. But yeah, we do need more parties to come to, to, to the market and come to play and just experiment a little bit more and free themselves in their thinking. Uh, Philip, you, I mean, obviously for the, the coming launch of your game, you, you obviously have an interest specifically in the diaspora, but also the African continent as kind of a consumer market. Have you found any particular marketing channels to be super effective at, at like reaching them and making them aware? Or, you know, have you tried some interesting, you know, how are you how are you spending your marketing budget to reach your your audience a marketing budget or a lack thereof at the moment <laughs> so we we mostly so far at least but we've we've actually been very lucky in terms of um uh let's say uh publicity like um at some point we've been we've been trying to do it ourselves but luckily uh, a lot of our partners have been very helpful as well. So as much as um, it's really hard reading these people, it's also it's also a very interesting journey, I could say. You know, it's it's for a unique product offering like a video game. It's very easy to get the attention of the like the people who are into technology, who are into techniques smartphones and things like that because they're always on their phones they're always looking for information on the phone so if you 
sort of present them with something that catches their attention, then it's really easy for them to keep on following your process, right? So regardless of whether we have the budget or not, we've just tried to be able, we've just tried to put out information that is relevant to the gamers. And it also sort of shows that such, such stuff exists in this continent. You can do it from here, right? Like games are not just for like Europe or Asia or North America. You know, you can, you can also make them here. You can start on your mobile phone. You can, you know, you, all you need is basically a story. You know, nowadays technology is readily available all over the world. There are all these cloud solutions, you know, and some, and they're really making them affordable for everyone across the world. So let's say for marketing, you know, for $5, you can reach a lot of people. Let's say like on Facebook or on Instagram or whatever. So basically what we're sort of doing for the continent is we're going to push a lot of our comic content out for free, right? So, so that like it's accessible to a lot more people. You know, they don't have to spend to know what we're creating. So that by the time the game comes out, then they really want to spend on something that we have put in a content. Right? We're also planning to develop like mobile games that are related to our AAA titles and released so that people can sort of get a general feel for what's happening. Luckily, we have a talented development team, although it's very small, but uh, they, it, it's easy for them to actually convert some of the of the assets that we have to actually fit like different types of mobile phones and all that so that we can actually create content that can reach these people. So basically, I think at some point, even if you do not have the resources, it's um, uh, getting the word out there. I'm sure like the other partners, let's say like for, um, for companies like that, I'm sure you can like reach certain agreements, like maybe like revenue share if you create a product that's really good and they feel they have the potential to actually push it. You know, at some point, if both firms can benefit much later on when the product hits the market, then I'm sure you can work at an, an arrangement with different partners like that in order to help push brand or studio, the game, and the company as well be doing the pushing. So it's up to you to strategize how exactly you want to hit the market, which market you're targeting, and how you're going to implement your whole strategy. That's what I think. Great. So I think, um, I suppose coming up to, to uh, we're, we're coming in kind of close to the end of the session, man, and there's kind of two more points that I just want to touch on. The first is, um, everyone has spoken about the importance of building up a community base, really, because that, that's the platform that you can, you know, that, that you can launch your game from, right? Um, and we've talked about sort of how there's a, a restriction in budget. So, and this is obviously not a uniquely African problem, game developers especially sort of our Indian smaller developers see these sort of problems internationally. But what have you, I think what's interesting for me or that I would like to see is, is that it's generally accepted internationally that one of the best places to develop and own that community is on Discord. And I'm wondering if, um, if anybody can share insights in terms of are there specific platforms that you have found for the African consumer that is particularly, you know, where, where are you building these communities? Where are you owning them? Uh, and like I said, internationally, we've seen that Discord seems to be the platform of choice. At least that's where the movement has gone in the last couple of years. But is that necessarily true for Africa? If you're focusing on an African consumer market, where would you be going to engage them? What platforms are you using in this engagement with them? Uh, and so, Label, maybe you can, we can start with you and then Aram, if you could kind of follow up. Now I'm now, now I'm un unmuted. You know, to, to, to pick up a little bit on a point that Philip had made earlier, um, when people are involved in tech or they are involved in, 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 in the space, then yeah, you know, then so so it's very easy to find communities of gamers, game developers, and those who are interested already on Discord. However, if I was to speak a little bit more broadly amongst 
amongst my customer base, for example, many of them would be unfamiliar with what Discord is, what it means, what it represents, and how you can build out a, 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 a community there. The, the approach that we have taken certainly is to say, uh, we as, 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 as the IP creators and the content creators need to be aware of what ultimately all the surfaces are, but for many of our customers' customers, what we still end up doing is still building out communities on place on social media, you know, places like Facebook, places like Twitter, because what we are finding is that the ordinary person is still very much there. Uh, in, um, Instagram, of course, just being another very important one that we see sort of like coming up. And, and yeah, that's, so that's our particular perspective on that. Philip, do you, do you see some similarities? Where is the African consumer? Where do you go and like develop and build your Yes, um, yeah, it's very true. Um, for Africa, it's, it's new. So Facebook, for us, we have WhatsApp groups, a lot of WhatsApp groups. Um, and we are also going the association route. So I think uh, we have the African Game Developer Association. I think trickling down, we are having country-specific communities. So in Ghana here, we have the Ghana Video Game Developers Community Association that also started from these game jams. So we try to participate in the global game jam, make a game recently. Last week, we did the Africa Communicate game jam. And these things trickle down. And they all happen on WhatsApp. Um, actively, then on Facebook for the for those who are not developer um, conscious, like just the other general community. But we do a lot of WhatsApp engagements. There is Discord. There's a Discord channel and Slack channel. But those channels, obviously, is just for the development community. But it's not as active as WhatsApp. If if someone sends a chat on Discord, they send it again on the WhatsApp chat for, for people to get to know about it. So that's the approach we have taken. Internally at Letty Arts, we, we also do have particular people, like I have interns, I do a lot of interns who convert to become ambassadors if they come from a university or something. So they run their own form of community engagement wherever they are in their own WhatsApp groups. And then they introduce people who want to be developers, artists to the bigger group. So we do a lot of WhatsApp engagement um, to start with. Then we also have university specific groups. So for instance, there's a university here called Lancaster University. There's a group of students, computer science students who do testing. So they are super excited about the games we build. So anytime we make something here, we just send it to them. They test it around their friends and then they give us a detailed feedback. Um, and we just use basic Google tools to do all these things. And for now, um, nothing standard to introduce Discord, Slack, but they are there. Those channels are there. What we also encourage our partners, for instance, if you launch a game with, um, let's say, an NGO here, we try to now consult with them how to market the game. Um, as Lebo and, uh, and Lebo said, these clients put games last in their campaigns. So they do the radio shows, the talks, and all that, thinking that is community engagement, and they bring the game last. They don't know that they need a community around the game before that game will strike. So you go for a meeting, you go for a seminar, then they bring, they tell people, download the game. And after a two hour session, only one person has downloaded the game. Uh, has downloaded the game and they don't understand. And I'm like, no, the game has to have been the first telling everyone, download the game, repeating it, download the game, because you need to get people um, oriented to the game. But if you make it as a last resort, they would, they would even forget about it. And it's only in gaming that you spend so much to build a product and it takes one second to put the person off. So it's a very risky space but the best way to also get direct feedback. So I would entreat that community building has to be one of the first things in any product development. As soon as we start, we need to make your community aware 
and have an innovative way to get them involved. And that is the way to actually make this marketing, like, like your game, marketing your game successful. Philip, where are you finding your audience? Like I said, where are you hoping, where are you getting your kind of engagement from your, uh, from your consumers? Yeah, um, um, most, I think the largest uh, sort of, the largest engagement we have at the moment is Facebook because uh, a lot of our, our initial um, comic book fans were on Facebook. So we had a group as well as an official page for Clan of the Kings. Uh, so once we actually incorporated the video game, uh, it sort of grew as well. But we we we've mainly been using Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so we're looking at uh, our YouTube channel. We'll start promoting it as well once like the game is done and we start releasing actual trailers for the game. But at the moment, our biggest engagement is Facebook. Thank you, guys. I, I think we are out of time now. Um, so I just want to thank you all uh, for sharing your insights and sharing your knowledge. Um, if you could uh, just in one sentence, what would be your recommendation for getting the most bang for buck from your marketing budget for any aspiring developers here on the sentence, Aaron? Go. Yes, I, I think uh, marketing should be really part of your development process and community engagement should be really part of your development process in order to make the best out of your budget. Lebo? <laughs> I'm going to have to echo what uh, Aaron says here, and this is that uh, marketing as a discipline forms part of the core of what we do because ultimately what we are engaging is, 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 is people. It is not an add-on, it is not a tack-on, it is something that you've got to think about as part of the, the, the design and the DNA of your game. So uh, don't make that mistake. And finally, Philip, what's your one sentence? How do you get most bang for you? Yeah. I'd say be and aggressive. So you just have to keep pushing, but also push it correctly. Push it smoothly. Know your target audience and aim for them. Great. Thanks so much, guys. So just in summary for everybody, I think the key points that we can take away from is focus on community building and engagement. To get the most out of your money, form strategic partnerships with people who will be able to share an audience with you or want to access the same audience and start with your marketing in mind from the very beginning of your development process because it forms such an integral part of that and you should be thinking on that from that from day uh, day one thanks very much everybody thanks for your time thank you for listening thank you, thank you.